tonight from Classic Spooky Stories, we have Fiddle Fingers. Captain Brass Buttons hummed happily and tapped his feet to a lively tune on board his pirate ship, the Jolly Jig. Every now and then he would stop to stroke his bushy beard and laugh loudly while he watched some of his cutthroat crew dance a hornpipe. Around him, other pirates played pipes, tambourines, and accordions. The sound drifted up from below deck to a sinister skull and crossbones flag, waving high above on the mast. Look lively, lads! Ha ha ha! bellowed Captain Brass Buttons, who was really enjoying himself. So were his loyal band of buccaneers, although they were armed to the teeth with pistols and cutlasses. The weapons were now next to useless and rusting badly. You see, the pirates preferred to make music and have a merry time. After all, the raiding ships and carrying off of their treasures was hard and dangerous work, which was one of the reasons why they had not done it in a very long time. But there was another reason, too. These days, the Jolly Jig and her crew spent most of their time at the bottom of the sea. For the Jolly Jig was a ghost ship, and Captain Brass Buttons and his colorful crew were ghost pirates. "'Tis a pity we don't have a fiddle player among us, Cap'n," said Patch one day, as he rested a moment against the ship's big wooden wheel. "'To be sure,' sighed Brass Buttons." That would be more of a treasure than all the booty we ever bagged. But that's enough fun for now, me hearties, continued Brass Buttons. For tis high time we made ready to set sail again. Aye, aye, Cap'n, said Patch, and in no time the crew were cheerfully busying themselves. They hauled on ropes, unfurled the ghostly white sails, and made ready to raise their phantom ship above the waves. Meanwhile, Captain Brass Buttons hurried to his cabin to put on his best boots, waistcoat, and hat. A short while later, the Jolly Jig rose majestically from beneath the waves to haunt the high seas, which it did whenever the moon was full. Passengers on passing ships would stare in amazement at the sight of the fantastic phantom ship. From its glowing decks came the sound of music and merry voices as the creepy crew sang and played. What's more, the ghostly ship was thought to bring good luck to all who saw it. But all that was about to change. That night, as the moon faded, the jolly jig sank again towards its watery grave. But just as it was about to touch bottom, a strong undersea current picked the ghost ship up and swept it along. Brass Buttons and his men were horrified. All they could do was hang on grimly while the Jolly Jig did its own wild dance along the ocean floor. At last, the ship settled and its shaken crew floated out from their hiding places. Shiver me timbers, uttered Bones. That was enough to set any ghost a quaking and a shaking. Captain Brass Buttons drifted up onto the deck to check the jolly jig was still in one piece. To his surprise, the wreck of another old vessel lay in the soft sand nearby. Ahoy, me hearties! Brass Buttons called his men and pointed eagerly. Tis time to go a pirating again. Before long, the pirate raiding party had set off in the longboat rowing just above the seabed towards the wreck. The battered ship lay on its side with a huge hole in the hull. An octopus came scuttling out. Some sharks swam past too, eyeing the pirates coldly. We'd all be sharks bait if we were flesh and bones, whispered Pigtail. Stand by to board growled Bass, Brass Buttons, leading his sea spooks onto the ship. He was first to enter the crew's quarters. There was a terrible noise coming from a dark corner which made his knees knock and his shoulders tremble. Who goes there? He called, trying to sound brave and fearless. 
Then he saw that the noise was coming from a phantom figure lying fast asleep in a hammock, snoring loudly. To Brass Button's surprise, he saw there was a fiddle resting on the sailor's chest. Brass Buttons poked him with his cutlass, and the sailor woke with a start. Who are you? you? he gasped. We might ask the same of you, replied Captain Brass Buttons. The crew called me Fiddle Fingers, seeing as I was always playing this fiddle, said the sailor. I've been stuck here all alone for more years than I can remember. The others abandoned ship before it sank, but I was playing a tune on my fiddle at the time and didn't hear their warning. A fiddle player, you say? Then tis good fortune we found you, boomed Brass Buttons. However, the captain and his crew soon changed their minds. No sooner had they welcomed Fiddle Fingers aboard the Jolly Jig than he began to play his fiddle. But what a shock for the other merrymakers, for instead of the tuneful harmony they had so been looking forward to hearing, he made a fearful scratching screech. It was the most terrible sound the phantom pirates had ever heard. Yet strangely, Fiddle Fingers didn't seem to notice. He went on playing happily as the other pirates winced. No wonder the rest of his crew fled, grumbled Bones, his bony fingers in his ears. But rough and ready as he seemed, Captain Brass Buttons was really a kindly soul. He felt sorry for Fiddle Fingers, left for so long without any ship's company, and he didn't have the heart to send him on his watery way again. So that gloomy day spelled the doom for the sorry spooks aboard the Jolly Jig. There was no more laughter, dancing, or merry music. Instead, all that could be heard when the ghost ship next appeared beneath the full moon were the woeful wails, horrified howls, and ghastly groans of her poor, suffering crew as they tried to drown out the sound of the awful fiddling. As for Fiddle Fingers, he just smiled happily and played on and on and on.